even imagine what that means. Emmanuel, he dwells in us. Sometimes we don't act like it. Maybe. Maybe it's just me. But sometimes we don't feel like it. You know, sometimes when you look around and you see the weakness of the flesh and you think, God is dwelling in me. Yes, because his word is not fleshly. His word is powerful. And if all that ever happens is we read his word and take it into our heart, we'll be strong. It doesn't matter how we look on the outside. We have the joy of the Lord. Thank you. I'm going to talk this morning about the Father's gift of power. Amen. Amen. And that power is his joy. Because his joy is our strength. Matthew, uh, the fourth chapter, and uh, the 16th verse, it says, The people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in darkness, the shadow of death has sprung up, the light of death has sprung up. And when I was getting this message, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and I, I Here's what I thought, and I just want to share it with the church this morning. Um, while we are rejoicing today, because this is a day of joy, while we are rejoicing with the great gifts that God has given to us and the light that we have on the Word, whatever amount of light we have, we have light. While we're experiencing that, Israel mourns. Israel mourns. And... That song, Come, O Come, Emmanuel. You know, while we rejoice that our sins are forgiven, in our Jewish families, they, they can't get forgiveness. Because you can't get forgiveness without Jesus. And they have not accepted the fact that, that the Messiah has come. Many of our Jewish friends are still uh, leaning in the law. And consider this, church. What, what would we do if we couldn't get forgiveness of our sins? I mean, I, I need it more than once. You know, I, I need it perpetually. I r rise and say, Lord, forgive me, because I don't know. You know, and when I go to bed, I say, Lord, forgive me. I want to walk in forgiveness. Yeah. What, if we, what, what if the Messiah ha wasn't revealed to us? I, I, I was grief-stricken for a moment to think, what, what if I couldn't go to the throne of grace? And ask for mercy. What if I couldn't go there and ask for my wayward children? What if I couldn't have an a, a opening? Jesus caused that veil to be rent in two. And we can now come boldly before the Lord. And we know he hears us because he tells us he hears us. And we don't always understand why he doesn't do what we want. But nonetheless, we know he never leaves us nor forsakes us. Think about our Jewish brethren today. How, how can they live without the forgiveness of sins in their life? And I, I've, I've received a, a different burden for them than I've always thought. I've always thought, well, shame on them. They didn't receive it. But, you know, there's something in them that cannot receive it until the light comes. And now... While we dwelt in the shadow of darkness and then came to Christ and the light came in, they're still dwelling in that place. And they get forgiveness on atonement. And then they have to try to be perfect without sin after that. And you know that doesn't last. We make mistakes, don't we? So they go and they have atonement and they do all that the law says. And then a few days, they don't have the forgiveness. They don't have the throne of grace. They don't have mercy. They don't have, they dwell in lonely exile because they have no spirit man in them. And I just thought about that. And I thought, in this third Sunday that we're celebrating the joy of the Lord and all that he has done in our life, how he's kept us, you know, how he's forgiven us and how he's walked with us and he's never left us. And what if I couldn't know that? What if I couldn't believe that? And here we are rejoicing. So 
So I pray that God will put a burden on all of our hearts, a deeper burden. I know we love Israel here. We give to Israel. We pray for Israel. We have the Israel signs in our church. But I just ask God to give us a deeper burden for these folks who do not have this. You know, she sings of the forgiveness of sin. And they don't, they don't have that. They don't have that until they receive the Messiah. So we need to love them, and I know that we do love them, but love them in a different way. Not love them because they missed their day of visitation, but love them because it didn't come open to them like it came open to us. So I want to talk about, today I want to talk about the power of God that forgives sin. That's why we have joy. We don't want to dwell in sin. We don't want to dwell in wrongdoing. And so God has given us joy. And it comes through the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is so much more than tongues. The Holy Spirit is so powerful that it causes us and nudges us. And sometimes, you know, you think you do something and you think, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And then you think, well, uh, you feel guilty. You know what guilty is to the Christian? Guilty to the Christian is the Holy Spirit nudging you. And saying, change this. The Holy Spirit is nudging you. You know, do something about this. Change or, or obey me or get on your knees. You know, it, it's not you. It's not the flesh would never remind you that you did something wrong. It's the Holy Spirit in you that nudges you and makes you have that guilty feeling or a feeling of remorse or a feeling that you need to settle something with someone. So thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost. It's, it, you know, when he moves in us, we have joy. Now, I'm going to show you in Scripture briefly this morning that the joy of the Lord is an element of the Holy Ghost and that when we get saved, the Holy Spirit comes into us. And then from then on, it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. So do we recognize the power of Jesus' joy? Because his joy causes us to sacrifice. Jesus said, but for the joy that was set before me, he endured the cross. So he had a spiritual joy in his flesh. He had the Holy Spirit in him that caused him to joy over what he was going to face, to joy over sacrifice, to joy over pain, to joy over things. You know, we serve a God that has plans for our life. We think that we've planned it. We, you know, the only things we didn't plan is the interruptions that God put in our life. But we sometimes think that that's the devil, but sometimes that's just God interrupting us. That was God that interrupted Mary's life and Joseph's life. It, it, to them, to the outward person looking on, that was a harassment. You know, it was something that was horrible. But God's plan brought about glorious uh, effects. And when we obey the Lord, then we will have a joy of the Holy Ghost. When you can, when you can see the suffering of somebody and have a, a, a spirit of prayer for them, and then that causes a joy to come into your spirit. So this morning, I want to talk briefly about this. You know, when your children come of age, if you've had children, and they come of age, and they get out on their own, and they get their own job, and they get their own house, and their own parents, and they become parents, and they get all that. And then you kind of, uh, if you're a good parent, you have concern. You don't, you don't fear, you just have concern. And you, you're concerned that, that they'll make enough money, you're concerned they can make their payments, you're concerned about them. And you look over there and you say, oh, Lord, help them, because you have a concern for them and you love them. Now consider Jesus. Consider what he had to do for his children, for his son. He had to take him through the cross. He had to take him through suffering. And you know, we talk a lot about the suffering, but there was shame. There was shame as they strung him up before the world to see. And then as they humiliated him, because they walked in front of the cross and they mocked him and they scoffed him and they humiliated him. And, you know, if you're a parent today, you know that you would never want that to happen to your son or your daughter because you would want the very best for them. And God wanted the very best for his son, and that was to give us eternal life. And so, you know, while we think of all the joy, 
And we need to have that joy because the world needs to see that joy in us. They don't need to see the wimpiness and we can't go here and we can't do that and we can't wear that. They don't need to see that. They need to see the joy of the Lord that lives in us. And there needs to be an aura of the Holy Spirit around us that, that, they, that they'll watch their mouth when they're with you and that they'll behave and be respectful because the power of the Holy Ghost dwells in you. And it should do more than dwell in you. It should dwell in you enough that it penetrates the atmosphere around you and they can tell that God lives in you. And they may not serve him right that moment in front of you, but that, that will penetrate their soul. Everybody was created to serve God. And they're, they're, they were given a self-will, so they go their own way. But the Holy Spirit will not let them go. He will dog them, if that could say that. So today we celebrate the promise of the Holy Ghost, which is the one that, that uh, convicts us, the Holy Spirit that pushes us and draws us and, and stops us in our tracks sometimes. And sometimes we just cry and the Holy Spirit is present to be with us while we go through our troubles. So I want to look at Romans 14, 17 through 18, Romans 14. It says, for the kingdom of God, and this is God's kingdom, and this is God's third day in Advent, And it talks about the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God. Did you ever just go before the Lord and say, Lord, I want to be acceptable to you. What, What can I do to be accepted by you? You know, you know that you're saved, but you go through hard troubles and trials, and sometimes you think that something is wrong with your salvation because he, the enemy is harassing you, and sometimes you don't feel his presence like you want to feel his presence. And so, you know, it's a constant thing with our flesh. The enemy is always hassling us in our flesh. So it's not about what we eat or we drink. It's not about flesh. That's what that's saying. But it's about righteousness. Well, what is righteousness? It's not better than somebody else. Righteousness is right standing with God. So it's not about anybody else. It's about you. It's about me. It's about our standing before God. And then when we stand before God, we we have to recognize his peace. We can't Go around, worry, worry, worry. I know we have trouble sometimes, and we have a worry moment. But it is not worry. You know, the peace of God is the joy in our soul. And I know that you know these things, but the Bible says in this passage of Scripture that it is righteousness, peace, and what? Joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy in the Holy Ghost. If you can walk in joy, you got the Holy Ghost, you know. If, if, if you can hear the manifestation of the Spirit telling you, don't go there, don't do that, this does not bless me, and, and ask for forgiveness, that's the Holy Spirit manifesting himself in you and driving you in the right direction. And, and, and we need to follow that and follow the right direction that the Holy Spirit gives us. So as we come to salvation, you can't come to salvation without the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says it's the Holy Spirit that draws you. So when he draws you and you respond, he lives in you. And then there are multitudes of gifts that come with his residence in you. So the scripture says that what, he, what is acceptable to him, and we need to know this in this season, not, not, don't get off course, but it says that, we need to be in right standing. You know, if we have a mad spell and we're mad for three days and don't speak to somebody, we're not in righteousness, church. And sometimes we, we, we are hurt and something really goes wrong and we're just really just have pain because something has hurt us. But we cannot dwell in unforgiveness because if we do, we're not in right standing and then we don't have peace and we don't have joy. These are things of the spirit church and we've got we got nasty flesh ways and God wants to control them and he he allows things in our life he doesn't give sickness he just things come you know the book of Job God tested him so God tests us sometimes to see where we are spiritually and if we'll serve him when things aren't good you know if I got money in my pocket and my car runs and my house bills are paid you know we're happy but that happiness can fade if there's a problem The kind of happiness that we're talking about today, the kind of joy, is it passes all understanding. 
You know, every, everything that comes against us, the heartaches of life, the loss of life, those kinds of things of life, if we can still stand and have joy in the Lord, then we're fired up by the Holy Ghost. And that's our, that's our kindling to keep the fires burning in our spirit. So if you want to be acceptable to the Lord, this is what you do. You get in right standing with him. You get forgiveness. You take care of all the little things, foxes that try to spoil your vine. And then you have peace in your heart. You show forth the peace of God, even in the midst of calamity. And you joy in the Holy Ghost. You praise the Holy Ghost. You worship the Holy Ghost. You, you give honor to the Holy Ghost. And you joy in the fact that he's leading you and guiding you and watch, watching over you, and if this makes you acceptable to God. People in the world, I've had so many funerals in my life, and I've made, uh, had funerals of people that I didn't know if they were saved, you know. And I try to give a good message, and I give a salvation message to the people that are listening, but I don't know about that individual, you know. And the, the, the deal is, is that we have to believe that we are acceptable to God. We can't just say, I got born again, I'm saved, and then live our life accordingly to what we want. And God is, the reason for this message is God is calling us in the new year to strengthen our relationship with God, to strengthen our communion with God, to think more of God. Where, where's God taking me this year? Then what am I going to do this year? How am I going to celebrate? But how am I going to give more of me to God? That is what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. In Romans fifteen thirteen, it says, The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope. To have hope, we need hope, church. Without hope, we just do, do diminish. To have hope, we have to have, be filled with his joy. It's his joy that sustains us. It's his joy that as we grow older, we get a little wrinkle, but in the spirit, we just get stronger and smoother and more powerful because we're on a destination to eternal life. And it's just awesome, church. God wants to fill us with all hope and joy. And I believe that this is a message for the church in this hour because sometimes uh, there is a spirit of hopelessness that attacks God's people. And I don't know if you've ever experienced it, but it's a downer. And, and it comes to us and we, we lose hope for a moment. We think, how can I do this? You know, this bill is bigger than I thought it was going to be. How, how can I do this? As when we start to question things, then our hope is not in God the way it should be. So I'm, I'm encouraging us in this new year, as you see all the things that's going to come down the tube, there can be good and there can be bad. There's good to the saints. Good, good is coming to us who love God with all our heart and worship him sincerity. But to those that don't know him, the world, our world is corrupted. And I know that you know that. And no, neither side of our world is perfect. And there is a corruption that's trying to destroy our world. But this is one nation under God. And that's who we are, and that's not going to happen. But we have to be full of the joy of the Lord, and that is the power of the Holy Ghost. The only way we can have the joy of the Lord is if we have the power of the Holy Ghost in our life. If we recognize and give him credit for guiding us and giving him credit for causing us to repent and giving him credit that we'll be holy as, as holy as we can unto him. First Thessalonians 1, 6, and 7. You know, it says, you, Paul's talking, and he said, you are followers of us and of the Lord, and you received much affliction in the joy of the Holy Ghost. Paul's talking about affliction. If you know the affliction that Paul is talking about, it, it is, it, you can read it in Scripture. He was in shipwrecks. He was in prison most of his life. And, and what did he do in prison? Did he cry out and stew and do all those kinds of things and feel rejected? He wrote the, he wrote the epistles. Right. And right there he said, I will, enjoy, I will embrace the power of God in my life at every season. I don't know if I could say this, Diane. I would like to know if you'd give me permission. But, you know, when you were on the third floor of the house in Grand, you were going through severe trials, weren't you? And, and may I say that? She had gone through chemo horrendous, not just simple stuff. I, w I was with her in that, and she's on the third floor trying to recuperate, and God gave her that song. 
That's just awesome. I couldn't help but think about that because, because I had been with her. And I don't know how she ever made it in the flesh. But God was with her. And she, she's, she's home with us and, and, and well. Thank you, Jesus. But when you sang that song and you said you were in Grand, I knew where you were. And, uh, but see, God wants us to have joy in the crisis of our life. The only way we can have joy in the crisis is to have the Holy Ghost present with us, to pray in the Holy Ghost and to pray and give thanks and glorify the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes he's the only comfort we have in our life. You can be single, you can be married, you can have huge families, but you can only find comfort in the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And when you find that power and that joy, then you can be a light in your family or in your neighborhood or wherever. But I, I, I love this so much, and I want, to, I want to give notice that the Holy Spirit wants to stir us like never before. Uh, don't, don't be shocked if you're just doing something very simple at home, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit just comes on you, and a, and a flock of goosebumps go up, and you go, whoa, what happened? And that's because the power and the anointing of God, if you desire him, he will be with you and he will show himself to you in the, in, when he's with you. So Paul says, you was with us, you followed us in much affliction, but we had the joy of the Holy Ghost. That's how Paul made it through all of his trials and tribulations. And the scripture says, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but it came in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. That's what we have to have for the new year. We have to have the power of the Holy Ghost. We have to have the assurance that he's with us. And if we are saved, he is with us. And we are empowered by him. And the reason for all this, if you notice the last part of that scripture, the reason for that is that we will be in examples. We will be an example of the power and the joy of God that lives in us. It's, it's so wonderful to know that God wants to walk with us. And, and church, we need to begin to realize that he lives with us. You know, you can talk to him. Amen. I find the older you get, you talk to yourself. <laughs> and I find the older you get, you just get in the car and you're going to, you know, it's, it's a 30-minute drive for me and I find myself just talking to myself. And then one day I was talking to myself and I said, I'm losing it. And the Holy Spirit said, I'm listening. And I know, it was a, I know it was the Holy Spirit because I wasn't listening. I was just talking. And, and the Holy Spirit said to me, I'm listening. And I said, oh, Father, forgive me. You know, because when we do that, we diminish the joy of the Lord. We diminish the power of the Holy Ghost. So we have to, you know, I, I don't want to say we have to be positive, the world's kind of positiveness. But we do have to have a spiritual a leadership in our life that keeps us on a keel that we trust God, that none of this stuff that's coming is going to afflict us because God is with us and we're more than conquerors through him. So, you know, the Holy Ghost came in Acts 4 and it empowered them. And that's why Paul, I think, was able to go through the afflictions, to write the Gospels, to do what he did. And that's why John the Revelator could go to the Isle of Patmos and write the Revelation because, you know, the, the Holy Spirit was released in the earth. And then I feel the grief again for the Jews because not only do they not under, understand salvation, but they have no power. They have no power of the Holy Ghost in their life. They have no guidance except God is guiding them but not with his mercy and his grace and his power. How great is our God to bring us mercy and grace and to give us the, the will to choose what to do. You know, that is a big responsibility, church. Yes. And we see that so many have taken their own will and gone their own way. But if they were right, raised appropriately, they will return because the word of God is a creative force in every individual. The Bible talks about that the Spirit of God is born in the heart of a child. And so how important that is. Thus, how many know the Spirit of God never leaves you? How many know our loss, our, our ones that are out of the way of the Lord, our young people, our grandchildren, those that we love very much and don't serve God, how many know that they were created by God? 
How many know the breath of God is in them? How many know that God is not going to give up on them until they blaspheme the Holy Spirit, which is they say, get away from me, I don't want you. But yet there will come a time in their life when they know they need God and hope will begin to rise in their heart and, and the Holy Spirit of God that lives in the creative force of humanity will come to fruition. I believe that with all my heart and I pray that all for my family and I know that people, our prayer warriors pray that too. Well, in com coming to close, I want to talk about one other thing and that's the awesome gift, the joy of the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 12, and I'd like you to just turn there because I would like you to see this. I don't preach about the Holy Ghost in this fashion much because I believe that you know about it and I believe the Holy Spirit is in you and, and that. But today God has laid this on my heart because of the, of the Holy Spirit is, has the joy. The joy has to be effective in our life for us to be a good Christian. So 1 Corinthians 12, 5. And I want to, I probably, well, this is just my thoughts that God gave me. And here it goes. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same Lord which worketh all in all. I want you to see that this morning. Admi administrations are people that do management, people that do finances, you know, and uh, diversities of operations is people that run the PA, the people that do things that make the house of God work, clean the house. Brother Leonard is so faithful to keep our house so clean. And I think it blesses God to see his house clean, very clean. And so these are the administration gifts, but they're all the same as the Holy Spirit. So when he walks down the aisle with the sweeper, it is the power of the Holy Spirit that's charging him to do that service for the house of God. And so I want us to see the Holy Spirit works all in all. Anything that we do, he works in us. Verse 7 says, The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. I don't like to do this, but I'm going to do it. Say... I have the manifestation of the Spirit. I have the manifestation of the Spirit. Woo! That was, that was strong and powerful. But that's what the Word of God says. You know, sometimes you just hear it. I wanted you to say it. Because I want you to realize that the manifestation of the Spirit is in you. And if you'll be acceptable to God. If you'll do the things that make you acceptable to God, then this power and this joy will be so strong in you that it will give an aura about you. And they'll either be mad at you and leave you or they'll respond to you, you know, and take in the Holy Spirit. So I want you to see that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man and woman, you know, who to profit with all. We need the manifestation of the Spirit in our life. Verse 8 says, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. It says, To another the word of knowledge, to another faith, to another gifts of healing, to another working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits. You know, discern if it's a good spirit or it's bad spirit. Discern to get away from it or draw it in. Discern these things. This, these are gifts. And then it says, and then, then this is the last of the list. Are you with me? You see this? Yeah. This is the last of the list and diverse kinds of tongues and to another interpretation of tongues. So here's the list. It doesn't mean one is greater than the other or one is lesser than the other. You might have wisdom. You might have a manifestation of wisdom. You might have a manifestation of faith. You know, you go through trouble and you just know the faith is with you and you're going to make it through. And somebody else, you come along and you need to put your arm around them and say, you need to get the faith of the Lord. Manifest faith in this situation and God will move for you. Now, what I want to say to the church today is they have it, the church has a tendency, and I don't mean this in any, any bad way, so don't take it bad, but we always... When a new convert comes, we always want to pour into them the power of the Holy Spirit through tongues and interpretation, those things. And that's okay. It's not wrong. But what I want to say to you, we need to pour into them the gifts of prophecy, the gifts of wisdom, the gifts of knowledge. We should teach them to seek for all these things. 
because the Bible says that they're all of the same spirit, and it says that they're given to them severally at will. That means you can have more. I find, I don't say that I have gifts, but I find that in a crisis, when I need something, I find that gift operates. And so God can use you in any moment when you're acceptable to him and you're walking in his faith and you, and you have the knowledge of God in your heart. That's why I wanted you to turn to this today because I wanted you to read it. I wanted it to get to your eyes and I want to talk it to you. And I want you to understand that it's the same spirit. The spirit of God causes him to clean the church. The spirit of God causes us to come to his house. The spirit of God causes us to be faithful. The spirit of God causes us to, to find out out if we're with wrong situation or with the right situation and God has a plan for everyone's life according to the gifts that he's given to us and he can give you more than one somebody said oh I got filled with the Holy Ghost now I don't I have it all well you, you have it all because he came with you when you got saved and then these are the gifts that he gives with you that you partake of and yes we want you to be filled with the Holy Spirit yes 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 but more than that, you need wisdom, you need knowledge, because wisdom and knowledge will keep you on the pathway that's right for your life. You know, and the Holy Spirit will nudge you. What you get with the tongues is power. That's what you get with the tongues. And you get, with wisdom, you get wisdom. With knowledge, you get knowledge. With prophecy, you prophesy. You might not be a prophet, but all of a sudden, a prophetical word comes upon you in the church, and so you prophesy. This is what we have in God. We have anything that we can desire in him. If we will take these gifts and say, God, I take any one of them or all of them, I want to be gifted by you. And God gifts us when he gives us the Holy Spirit. He gifts us when he saves us with the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So all I'm saying this morning is that we should seek all of them as much as we seek one of them. Because they're all powerful in our life. And maybe, yeah, <laughs> and they all give us the joy. I, I think that I printed that joy a little loud, but I thought the mailman needed it. <laughs> and the mailman would deliver it. But, you know, this is the joy that we have, moving in the gifts. And this is why we come to church, that the body will help each other, that the body will give a word, the body will give a, a prophetic word, the body will give a prayer, the body will do something to encourage one another. So I wanted to say today that the joy of the Holy Ghost is so prominent and available in our life. I've been in the church for at least 80 years. I was saved very young at five, but my mother raised me in the church from a child but before that. And I have never seen a pastor get up in the pulpit and say, let's have a meeting and let's all pray for wisdom. Have you ever seen that? No. Have they ever called and said, let's just have a Holy Ghost meeting and ask for wisdom? Or let's have a Holy Ghost meeting and ask for, them for uh, the discerning of spirits because we need that in this hour, church. So, you know, we always say, let's have a meeting and let's seek for the power of the Holy Ghost. First of all, the Holy Ghost is in us. Second of all, yes, we need the power. And yes, the tongues are powerful. But we need it all. We need everything. We need to know when to shut our mouth. We know when to open our mouth. We need to know when we're with wrong people and doing wrong things and what God wants us to do. Because everything we think to do for God, is our flesh is always involved. So we always have to say, get down flesh and get up spirit. And I rise to the service of the center of my life that I can glorify you in any gift you want me to use. And you may never get one gift that you desire, but in the interim, he'll give you, you'll have other gifts. If you say, I want to be used of you, Lord, use me, you'll be surprised and shocked. You might be in the supermarket when somebody is in the same department looking over the fruit or the vegetables, and God's, and you have this thought, oh, I I see they look discouraged. I might just say good morning or Merry Christmas or, you know, having a hard day today. You know, you can say that to a stranger. You can open up your heart and use that gift to speak to them. And what is wisdom? You know, wisdom, we think the world's thought, which is intelligence, you know. But wisdom 
is having the word of God available to share at any given moment. That's wisdom. If you can look and see somebody that's walking down the street and they're discouraged and despondent and they sit down and they get up and, you, and the Holy Spirit says, what's wrong with them? But you don't think it's the Holy Spirit. You think it's you. You go like, hmm, what's wrong with him? You know, but then just think, could the Holy Spirit put that in my heart? You know, especially the people that are standing there with signs. What do you think when you see them asking for money? I mean, what, what do you think? Well, the first thing I think is you're standing in front of Walmart and they, got, they need help. You know, but we don't understand the heart of man. Only God understands the heart. And so what, what is our spiritual feeling when we pass them like that? Now, I'm not just talking about giving them money. I'm just talking about what is our, what does the depth of our heart say? Do we pray? Do we say, God bless them, God help them? You know, because that's a way of using the gifts of the Spirit. We, we give them money, but we give them the, the Bible with it. You know, because we want them to see the word of God. And it's important, church. These gifts are so powerful. Every one of them is important and powerful and given through the power of the Holy Ghost. And we need to look at them and meditate upon them and say, God, use me in any one of these. Any one of these that you want me to use, use me. Church, we have to, we have to become relevant to the things that God wants. I don't know if that's the right word to say. But I tell you something. We need to be so mindful. When we set out on our day, Lord, use me today wherever you want to use me. I'm available. I read your gifts. I, I challenge anybody to manifest this passage of Scripture and, and um, memorize it so that you can just say, see that right there what gifts you need for that moment of time. We've got to be more available than we are. Okay, here's my last scripture. 1 Peter 1, 7 and 9. That the trial of your faith is much more precious than gold that perisheth. If you've had trials, church, he's been pushing gold on you. The trial of your faith is much more precious than of gold that perishes, but it can be found to praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, this is our faith, church, who having not seen, you love him, in whom yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Let me tell you that if the rapture happened today and I was flying through the air, I would be singing joy unspeakable. And we need to live in that realm that the joy of the Lord is unspeakable in our life and more powerful than any weapon that the enemy forges against us. As you meet with your families this year, if you have unsaved loved ones, speak a word of kindness to them. You know, show the joy of the Lord to them. Whatever the Holy Spirit leads you, he'll lead you what to say and what not to say and how to do it. And just, you know, set yourself when the family comes together, God, what do you want me to do? Well, how do you want me to, what do you want me to say? guide me and you'll find out so this is the hour first timothy 1 13 gird up your loins the loins of your mind it's all about your mind it's all about believing and thinking and desiring and following the spirit of god gird up the loins of your mind be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is brought to you in salvation uh, remember that nehemiah eight ten says the joy of the lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You have to have the joy to get through the trials and the tribulations and the affliction and all the things that the enemy wages against you. But Father, we thank you for the power of your word. Lord, I have did what you asked me to do. I pray, Father God, that you'll speak these gifts into the desire of your people. Lord, that, that they will know these gifts they will use these gifts and they'll be ready to appropriate them in the new year as we face the difficulties. But God, there might be difficulties in our world, but there is peace in our heart. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.